Hey YouTube, I am posting this video specially because I was told I was tagged in a comment on my most recent uh, pick a card reading. And I was tagged to this Tarot Tribe tag by V Love and Crystals. And um, I really appreciate her. She has been a follower since pretty early on. Sorry, I got the Demon Kitten. If you're familiar with my page, you'll know all about her. If not, meet the Demon Kitten. She thinks film time is just show her bum and be bad time. And the room where I would usually film is full of parts. So I'm stuck in here. So anyway, without further ado, I don't want this video to be forever. I'm going to go ahead and get started. And I will be copying and pasting the questions in the original format and putting them down in the description box. Um, but I did write like a little shorthand note to kind of get the gist of the question to read off as I go. So the first question is, how did I get into tarot or oracle? Um, so how I got into tarot was I started practicing, or I shouldn't say practicing, but I started studying witchcraft when I was 14. And one of the first things that I saw was tarot cards in the book section. Um, when I very first started into witchcraft, it was right around September, October of 2003. So this was Halloween time and Barnes and Nobles downtown Baltimore had this huge witchcraft section set up for Halloween. Um, and there was tarot cards and there was books and I just, I loved the idea of reading cards. Um, at first I didn't have my own deck. It took me about a year and then I got my first deck. Um, but I spent that first year dreaming of just reading tarot. I just was drawn to it. Um, second, are you drawn more to Oracle or Tarot and why? Realistically, I love all forms of cardomancy. I like Oracle. I like Tarot. I like reading playing cards. Um, it'll depend on what I'm doing. I, um, I do draw a Tarot card and an Oracle card every day, but I use a specific deck. Right now I'm using the Soul's Journey Oracle. Um, I don't know if I'm going to continue to use the Soul's Journey or if I'm going to switch them up, but that's what I do right now. Uh, it really just depends on the question because I feel like Oracle cards don't tend to answer the questions as realistically as Tarot would. Um, I feel like Oracle sugarcoats things a lot and I feel like they, they tend to dance around problems and where Tarot offers solutions and uh, yeah. Out of the two, it's probably tarot, but usually it depends on the question. Uh, if you could create your own deck, what would it be? I would create my own tarot and oracle deck that are meant to be used together. Um, I'm not sure exactly how I would do it. Sorry if you see my arm being weird. I'm, I'm taking these boots off because they hurt. <laughs> but um, I would definitely to put them together in a way that both decks worked together seamlessly. Um, I would have similar designs on both, similar colors. Um, if Tara had animals in it, then, the, then the, the work would have animals, obviously, something like that. And that the meanings would um, coincide and work together. So that if you pulled the Oracle card and you pull a Tara card, you're going to look at them and you're just going to see that flow. I don't know if how easy that would be to make, but that would be my dream if I could do it. Okay, show the first deck, Oracle Tarot or both, and which which you learned with. So, my first tarot deck was gifted to me by a gentleman that I used to walk his dog, and he was also into witchcraft, and it is the original Witch's Tarot. It is the one that's got the black back with the silver pentagram, and it's got the court cards that are um, basically copied and pasted. I'm going to grab a couple court cards and I'll show you what I mean. Now, what on earth are you doing? Sure, we're doing something bad. I can hear the noise. Um, this deck does not work for me. It is, it is very much a Toth. I think that's how you say it. It's Toth or Thoth. I'm, I'm not really sure. Um, centric deck it is supposed to be it says that it's a rider weight inspired deck but even the meanings just they're not very rider weight and um 
Okay, so I got a full suit here. There's the queen, there's the princess, um, there's the king, so prince. So I can show you what I mean about the court cards. Okay, so as I was saying, I do not do very good with this type of deck anyway. I don't like it. I'm not, I don't, I'm just not attracted to the energy. Um, it just kind of turns me off and I just cannot read with it. Uh, so that's my first complaint about this. Just energy wise, I don't like it. But then I started realizing that the court cards are literally copied and pasted and the colors changed. That is the only difference. And I'm an intuitive reader. I do not read using the books unless I'm super duper stuck. And then even then I don't usually use those meanings. It just gives me an idea. So for cards to look this similar, it is very hard for me to tap in and just get a feel of what it should mean because it's like, it's just the same card repeating over and over and over. So that's, that's my first deck. I will always keep this deck because it was my legitimately first deck, but I have given up hope of ever being able to read with it. This is one of my few decks that is for sentimental purpose only. Now the first deck that I read with, this is actually my second copy of this same deck. Uh, my ex ended up losing one of my cards to the original one and I'll never get it back. But this is the purple boxed Rider Waite Smith deck. I will have links in the description box to purchase these for yourself. I'm pretty sure Amazon sells that Witch's Tarot. Um, but, you know, just in case you guys are interested, I'll make sure they're down there. And you can tell just from how I'm holding these cards. I already got the bend in them. And I've only just repurchased this deck about two and a half months ago, if that. I got it at the end of November, and it's now the end of February. So I, I've put some hard use on these cards. Uh, this was the only tarot deck that I had to read with until January. And I do hello readings, even just for myself. And I want to do a bonus. My first Oracle deck was the Doreen Virtue Healing with the Fairies. And this is actually my second copy of this deck as well. The first deck I still have, and it was given to me by a neighbor. I love the back on these. And, you know, I love the fairies. They're so pretty. But my neighbor gave it to me, and I was missing the... Uh, which card was I missing? It was a V-name card. I think Visualization. Something like that. I was missing one of the cards. So what I did was... The cat stole my thing here. I took the missing card out of the new deck that I bought and stuck it into the old deck so that I could continue. Yeah, it was this one. I think it was this one. I think, I don't know, it's, it's been a while. But anyway, I took the missing card and put it into this one so that I could still use my deck. So yeah, I'm, I misspoke. This is actually still my first deck with just a new card put into it. Looking back, I could have probably done that with my tarot deck, but I don't know. I just ended up using the whole new one, and now it's too late. So that is my first tarot, my first oracle, and the tarot deck that I learned with. Now the next question. Uh, a recent deck and crystal, and why were they calling you? Oh my goodness, I have so many recent decks. Um, my most recent deck... would be my Mystic Monday and my Tattoo Tarot. Those are my two most recent decks. And those were calling me because I was seeing them in YouTube videos and I just was so in love with the drawings on the Tattoo Tarot and the colors on the Mystic Monday, especially those holographic edges. I just, I fell absolutely in love. I had to have them. And I didn't pick them up because you see it was hard enough to keep her out of the three decks. But um, you guys see them on my channel all the time. If you're not a viewer, go check out any of my pick a card readings. I also have some unboxings and I'm working on reviews. You'll see I have them on my, my channel so much. <laughs> so if you don't see them here, you'll definitely see them soon. As far as crystals, I have, an, I have two new crystals. Both of them are jewelry. Both of them are rings. My most, most recent is this turtle. It's opal. And I found this at the flea market. 
My boss swore it was fake when I found it for 20 bucks. It is not. It is legitimate opal and legitimate sterling silver. And I'm so lucky. Did you see her just knock my teddy bear down? This cat's possessed by demons. I'm convinced. As I was saying. Stop. The gentleman didn't know what he had. I'm convinced. And so I got it for a steal. The other stone that I got. Uh, this is the, the craziest story I've ever told. And ever had happen to me. This is Rose Quartz. Set in sterling silver. And back in the summer. I had had exactly $6 in my pocket. And this gentleman came and he was selling jewelry. And most of it was just gaudy and ugly. And I was telling him, like, I didn't have any money. I'm not interested. And I turned my back and I put my hand out to do something. I forget what it was. But I put my hand out to do something. And he grabbed my hand and slid my ring on like this, on this finger. And as soon as he put it on, I felt the energy of the stone. And I'm like, holy hell, that's rose quartz. And I looked down at it and I'm like, it's a little big for my hand. So, um, the size of the stone. I like more dainty rings, but it goes, it fits me. And I fell in love. He's, he wanted $10 for it. And I said, look, all I have is five. I wanted to keep a dollar for a drink because it was hot. And he was like, fine, I'll take it. My boss was like, why are you doing that? I said, look, this is genuine. This is real rose quartz and sterling silver. I have to have it. He's looking at me like I spoke gibberish, but that is my most recent crystals. Both of them are extremely lucky to get. Share a tip. Okay, as for a tip, don't listen to what the books say about reading tarot. Reading tarot is your journey. However you read tarot is right. If you're like me and you read intuitively, that's fine. You're not making up readings. The cards tell you what they mean. If you're reading it by the book and that's the only way, that's fine too. Not everybody can do intuitively. It doesn't mean you're any less or any or we're any more or special. It's just how we read. Do not let anybody discourage you or tell you you're different or wrong. Just do you and read it how you read it. There is no right or wrong way. At the end of the day, it's how you read tarot. Don't let anybody tell you any differently. Um... The first tarot tuber that I subscribed to. That would be, I actually subscribed to a couple of them on the same day. I subscribed to the Tarot Oracle. I love his channel. Um, I subscribed to, I think it's the Tarot Hermit. I know there's a hermit in his name. I meant to write this down, I just drew a blank. I subscribed to Moonlight Guidance. She is my absolute favorite. And then I subscribed to Boho Tarot. Um, as time went on, I ended up subscribing to people like Ethany and, you know, some of the bigger names. But those were my core channels. I found a couple more channels later on that I also really love. But those were my first four channels. And those are the ones that gave me the courage to do this and who showed me that there is a demand for this. And at the end of the day, I will always love you guys always love you guys uh life before terror or the holistic path um i was a young teenager when i started terror i started terror at 15 so i don't really remember life before i learned it totally but i will say this i learned i sat down and actually became totally focused on learning intuitive reading in my 20s i was 24 uh, I put it up for a few years and I've only just recently picked it back up. So my life before I started really doing this like full time and trying to make money off of it and everything was a wreck. I was homeless. I've been through the ringer. I've been to hell and back. I feel like tarot has given my life purpose. Um, it lets me help people and do for people without putting myself in any kind of a situation it lets me explain things to people in a different way. Um, all around tarot has changed my life for the better. And there's just no other way to say it. it, it that life before tarot was way different and not in a good way. Um, my go-to spread, top three. First and foremost, I do a three-card spread. That is my general, you know, quick, quick thing. 
for a question, an actual question for a reading, it's typically an eight card spread or if the universe gives me more than whatever the universe gives me. And every day I draw one card from each deck. So the one, three and eight card spreads are probably my go-to spreads. I can do something more advanced like the Celtic cross or whatever, but those are my, my major like everyday spreads. Um, most anticipated deck of 2020. I don't really follow new decks like that, but that, that new like five coin tarot or eight coin tarot that just came out, the tattoo tarot. Oh my God, I want it so bad. And since it is relatively new, I'm going to go ahead and count that. I wish I would have been involved in the Kickstarter to already have my deck, but could have, would have, should have, right? Um, my tarot wish list. I actually put my Amazon wish list down in the description box uh, for the Cardamancy. Not just so that you guys have a chance to see what I bought or want to buy, but, you know, just in case somebody ever wants to send a gift. I know I have the Wild Unknown Tarot and Oracle and that whole thing. I know I have um, the Island Wellness. I know I have the Doreen Virtue um, Romance Angels cards that are like hundreds of dollars right now because they're out of print. But I keep hoping... I'm one day going to find a really cheap deck. Um, I have a lot on that wish list. Let me just put it that way. It's probably better if y'all just go click the link and look. You don't have to buy me anything. I'm not asking you to, but that's just the easiest, quickest way for you to see what's on it. It's just to go click the link and look. It's right down in the description box in the links. Uh, impressions and fears. I have no fears of tarot. My impressions with it were always um, positive I don't, and just curious and feeling like this was the thing for me. I never was afraid of it. I, I have no fear of it to this day. Even the bad cards like the tower and death and all that. It's cards. Um, I love them. It feels like it completes me. And uh, I could never be afraid of myself. Would you like to start reading? I have started reading. I have been reading for people since I was a teenager. Um, this just here recently, right before I started the channel, is when I started really reading for people as a more mature reader and a more established reader. And I am now trying to turn this into a business, something I can make money of, off of, and something that lets me do what I love and help people. So yes, I'm already reading. <laughs> That counts, right? Have I ever gotten another reading? Um, I've never had a person read for me in person, but I very frequently do like the pick a card readings and live readings here on YouTube. And yes, I've had other readings through that. And oh my goodness, they're spot on. Even when I don't want to hear it, they're spot on. Vibes felt when reading. This is going to sound really weird. But when I am reading tarot, I feel colors. Let me explain because I probably just got like a million eye rolls. But um, you know how when you walk into a room and, and the colors are bright and it just feels like, it feels like you're wrapping yourself in a colored blanket to me, okay? So if I pick a card, like especially with the Mystic Mondays deck and the Tattoo Tarot deck, the way the colors are used in those is very easy for me to just, my brain just goes right to a color and I just feel like it's wrapping me up in that color blanket. Um, I will get feelings in my gut and I will hear things. Um, but when I say hear something, somebody whispered in my ear, it's like hearing a thought. Uh, so I will think the thing, I guess is the better way to say it. I can also, I am very, I'm, I'm, I'm an empath. So especially when I am close to the person I'm reading with, or four, I will pick up their feelings and their reactions to the cards. And many times I can tell how they're taking the cards before they ever open their mouth. Um, that's not something I can do so much over the internet unless I'm like video chatting. I have to really be connected. I'm working on developing that. Um, and of course, general readings. If I'm doing a general reading, but I have people that I'm looking at, I can kind of pick out who it's affecting. And that's really cool. The final thing is to tag someone else. Oh my goodness, I'm terrible at doing this. So I'm going to say if you're watching this video, I tag you. I would love to hear what you have to say and see what you have to say. 
leave it in the comments. You can do a video. Um, the original poster, V Love Crystals, V Love and Crystals, they're going to take our videos and put them in a playlist. So I, I say they because she has some co um, collaborators on it. So if you make a video, make sure that you let her know as well so they can include it. And um, let's make this a thing. It's a really great way for all of us in the Tarot 2 community to kind of get to know each other, give each other support, help the smaller channels like mine to grow, and, you know, share our, our community better. And uh, this is a really cool way to get to know each other. And one of the few tags that I've actually felt like doing. So thank you so much for V Love and Crystals inviting me and tagging me. As always, as in every video, if you like what you see and you want to see more, please take a moment to hit that subscription button and click the bell to be notified whenever I post. I know it doesn't seem like much to you, but I've just reached my 100th follower yesterday. So that just let me get my unique URL. Now I need to get to 1,000 and the 4,000 hours of watch time to get monetized. Without you guys, I will never be able to do anything but just talk to a camera and look goofy. You guys, your, your subscriptions, your following, your interaction, you all give me material to work with. You all keep me going. Without you, I wouldn't be here. And I'm relying on you guys to help me get to where I can make a living off of this. One day, I want to be able to look back and say, wow, I have this beautiful new place because of my followers helping me. That, that means the world to me. I want to make friends with you all. And I can't make friends if I don't see you guys. And if I don't, if you're not subscribed, I won't see you. Okay? It's easy peasy. You will also find all of my social media links down in the box below, including a Patreon. I do both free and paid for content on the Patreon. So you don't have to feel pressured into paying. Uh, I kind of lost my breath there. Um, but if you do, I promise it is unique content that you will see nowhere else. And, um, like I said, my Amazon wish list is down there. Information on how to pay me if you feel like you want a tip or that, you know, getting a free reading isn't your thing, or you just want to donate for having a reading. I have no set prices on my readings right now. I simply ask that you donate what you feel comfortable with. I think that covers everything. If you want a reading, hit me up here on social media, comment, message me, find me on any page. Let me know what you want to know about. Is it general? Is it a question? Make your donation, whatever. Let me know if it's public or private, and we'll get going. I think that covers everything that anybody just introduced to me would need to know, and I will see you all again very soon. Bye, y'all.